I'm not well. I feel confused. It's confused in my head. Who am I? Where am I? What, what do I want? Always the same fucking questions. And then there are these multiple personalities trying to take over. I see them. I see them as four paintings by that guy with all the faces of made of food and stuff. Archimboldo. Winter. The Emperor Rudolph, the librarian, and the reversible head and a basket of fruit. Each one represents one of my four tormentors. Do you have any idea what the life of a schizoid is like? Take today, for example. My boss told me if I don't start working faster, he's going to fire me. Nice, eh? <laughs> Naturally, my four personalities each reacted as only they know how. Here's how it went. Fair weather or foul, feeling well or ill, everything going fine, everything going wrong. You have to keep thinking positive and above all, think big. What do I mean? This morning, for example, my boss chewed me out because I don't work hard enough. Who? Me? So I looked around and zoomed in on my colleagues one by one. Who is the fucking bastard that ratted on me? Four files a day is not enough. That's what he said, especially when Farley is doing 32 right next to me. Crap. Now I know why Farley's eyes were always so red. Asshole. But I was stunned by the accusation. I went back to my desk and started grinding out files like a fucking jackhammer. <laughs> about one, everybody went to lunch, but not me. <laughs> they all went home about five. <laughs> At 11, the night watchman went by. <laughs> and again, <at> three. <laughs> At nine, the others came in again, and I was still there. <laughs> About quarter to five, I dragged my ass into the boss's office and slammed 99 finished files right down his desk. He stared at me and asked me why I did it. I said, now you can fire Farley. You don't need him anymore. Fucking asshole. Think positive. Think big. It's so hot. I'm sticky all over with sweat. That's why I'm so irritable. The boss told me if I don't work harder, they'll fire me. But who feels like working in this heat? And that fool keeps forgetting that I'm an emperor. That's true. True as well that we have air conditioning in the office. But what about when I go outside? I have to cross a desert of asphalt in the sun to reach my car. Which is a furnace, because there's not an inch of shade in the whole damn parking lot. The mere thought of it tires me to death. You see, it's really the company's fault, not mine. So I ignore him and continue working at my own pace. An emperor's pace, mind you. Majestic, like someone who's never needed to work. One file every two hours. Ten minutes to read it, twenty to let it sink in, ten more to reread it, and another twenty to reflect upon it. Then it's time for a coffee break. Fifteen minutes, plus five for a cigarette. Back at my desk, I read the file once more and take a few notes, which takes care of another half hour. Three minutes to put a few X's on the form, close the file, and seven minutes to regather my strength. Then it starts all over. Eight hours, four files. Now, that ass-kissing scab next to me Thardly, he wraps up 32 files a day. That's why they keep threatening to fire me. But I put an end to it. At lunchtime today, I logged into the system with Farley's password and added a number of X's at random, well, not exactly at random, to his files. At the back of the envelope calculation, it should cost the company between 30 and 50,000. Then I sent the controller an anonymous tip. Two hours later, the boss stormed over to Farley's desk and loudly informed him that he'd better start working more carefully instead of filling out the forms with his fucking eyes closed just to be the fastest and make his colleagues look like shit. At least they take the time to think about how they're doing their paperwork while he's torpedoing the company with his sloppy habits. Uh, During this tirade, I nodded solemnly at every turn, but inside I was dancing a jig. Sly as a fox, happy as a clam, that's my philosophy. And it's all because of the heat. Even in winter or fall, any time, 
slow and steady, always wins the race. It's useless. Whatever you do, whatever you think, your decline is inevitable. So, carpe diem. Seize every moment and get pleasure from everything that comes your way. Never leave till tomorrow anything you can grab today. Don't do what my colleague Fartley does. He destroys his days working like mad while I watch porn online. It's probably just that I'm a lot more intelligent than he is. I mean, I can finish a file in a couple of minutes, which leaves me time to do whatever the hell I want. If I'm not checking out some porn, I can play poker online or chat with my friends on Facebook. I'm certainly not about to waste any more time working. Unfortunately, today the boss gave me an ultimatum. Shape up or ship out. What's worse, the asshole thought he'd try to get to me by taking Farley as an example. I nodded grimly, went back to my desk, and started plotting my revenge. You should know that my boss is a big jazz fan, a collector of rare recordings, LPs, even old 45s and 78s. He buys them on eBay and has them sent to the office. This morning, in fact, I noticed down in the mailroom there was a package, about the right size. So I went back down and sure enough, it was addressed to the boss. As soon as the clerk turned his back, I pinched it, poured a whole cup of coffee mixed with crackers over it, and discreetly placed the mess behind Farley's monitor. The moron was so intent on his work, he didn't even notice. Then I called the boss's landline from my cell phone, identified myself as Farley, and asked him to come to my desk. When he reached Farley's desk and saw the sucky package, he went nuts. Inside was one of three surviving original recordings of a live concert by Django Reinhardt in 1934, valued at $1,350. Of these three, this recording was the only one to have the original cover in perfect condition, at least until a few minutes ago. Farley was immediately promoted to a cushy job at the firm's new branch in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan and I was asked to replace him. It couldn't be clearer. It's useless. You will never be saved from the decadence you are steeped in, no matter how hard you work. So, so enjoy yourselves. Don't fuck everybody else. Those who have reached my venerable age are long free from passionate desires. They understand what is important and what isn't. So when my boss threatened to fire me for low productivity, I took the news calmly with dignity and class, and replied that in his place I'd have done it ages ago. He turned red as a hot pepper, grabbed an empty cardboard box that he keeps menacingly in plain sight on his desk, shoved it into my arms, and told me to get lost. Smiling, I took the box back to my desk, and started emptying out the drawers. The office had become dead silent. Then one of the women started sniffling. I, on the other hand, was perfectly calm, because like any good long-time employee should, I had prepared myself a stout parachute. One might think I'm referring to a different occupation, opening a restaurant, getting a taxi license, or some other job far more difficult than this one. No, no. I'm talking about Iceman Brothers. The biggest and most ball-breaking client this company has. Iceman Brothers is on my side, you see. Over years and years of patient and now exclusive suffering, I have been absorbing their whims and whippings. My colleagues, and especially the boss, happily accepted this arrangement, as it allowed them to concentrate on the only thing they liked about Iceman, the profits. As a result, I gradually became the only account they would talk to. So I gathered my things at an exasperatingly slow pace, waiting for the phone to ring. And it did. A call from Medwith Iceman himself, the oldest brother. I informed him briskly that as I'd just been fired, he would have to speak directly with the boss. I fear I cannot repeat the comments of Mr. Iceman, a person accustomed to dealing with dock hands, but I assure you they were not the words of a happy man. Five minutes later, my boss hurried over to my desk and helped me put my things back with his own hands. As he slunk off, cardboard box under one arm, I felt a moment of 
sincere pity for him. But only a moment. I had soon returned to detesting him with noble detachment. Because I understand what is important and what isn't. So, what did I actually do after my boss chewed me out? I tried to reason with him, but he wouldn't have it. Did I have to resort to a strategy from one of my other personalities? No, I'm not that far gone yet. I'm still fairly practical, and I don't like it when things get too complicated. So I ran him down as he was crossing the parking lot. No, no, he, he's not dead, but he's got other things on his mind now. And what if someone recognized the car? Oh, I'm, I'm sure they did. A pink BMW Roadster is hard to miss. Never have understood why Farley chose such a garish color. <laughs>